name is Gaetan Pelletier. I'm the executive director of the um, Northern Hardwoods Research Institute. This three-part video series is inspired by a presentation that uh, we made at the uh, Forest and Bees Industry Forum in Fredericton on March 16, 2023. So we now understand the gaps and the challenges around our hardwood resource. Uh, so let us look at where we want to go from here. What type of results do we want to get? So we are introducing uh, different concepts that are useful um, when we're considering uh, managing our hardwood resource uh, differently. The first one is with regards to the uh, hierarchy of forest management planning scales. And we, we believe that it should be reversed. Uh, the status quo um, we're adopting today at the strategic scale, the annual level cut of hardwoods is constrained uh, mostly by fallout from softwood operations. Uh, we're assuming that time has little impact on uh, tree quality and, 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 and health. At the operational scale, uh, the harvest is very often regulated uh, just by a sheer total of all hardwood products co coming from all zones. Um, treatments are very vague and then the stratification is, is rather coarse and it comes from the forest management plans. So in what we call the new paradigm, uh, then um, we're, 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 we're suggesting that we're driven by restoration and also uh, not losing value and solo content from our hardwood trees, stands and, and forest. So we're, we're advocating uh, targeting trees of poor health uh, that have saw logs, uh, harvesting them first before they lose their, their saw logs, uh, harvesting low vigor trees first, uh, reducing competition around crop trees that we want to leave in, in uh, partial harvests, uh, recruit new cohorts of desired species, and of course, uh, pay a lot more attention on, on stratification. And then uh, we're advocating applying custom treatments to smaller block sections and promote uh, better utilization in, uh, in forest. So from there and only um, at that point, uh, we recommend formulating a strategy and, and we, uh, we are suggesting very strongly that we start creating some zones in, uh, in uh, Crown Lanes licenses, for example, in large industrial freehold, where we recognize uh, the potential to, to, to grow quality uh, hardwoods. In those zones, uh, we recommend the annual level cut be calculated separately, uh, and then uh, volumes from harvests are uh, regulated appropriately, and then we implement uh, state-of-the-art harvest-based civiculture. So this uh, zone of uh, high quality hardwood potential that we are um, advocating or talking about, um, we're working with uh, Dr. Paul Arp at UNB and uh, one of his graduate students, uh, Elizabeth White, to, uh, to develop a methodology to identify those, those areas uh, so that forest managers would not be uh, left uh, uh, struggling to try to identify those zones uh, f within which we implement this new regime that we are uh, suggesting. The strategic forest management plan uh, in those zones uh, should be prepared uh, differently than the way it is today and we uh, strongly recommend to um, formulate objectives that are very specific, that, that are measurable, achievable, realistic, and also uh, bound in, in time. Uh, by example, um, one of those objectives uh, in a special high potential hardwood zone uh, could be um, by the year 2042 in the working forest, uh, the growing stock of sugar maple will have grown by 15% from its uh, 2012 level. Uh, increased its uh, acceptable growing stock ratio by 10 percentage points, uh, increase its pea size by 10%, uh, 
uh, stalking and saplings uh, will have increased by 25% in young and immature stands, and stalking and saplings will have increased by 10% overall in late uh, successional stands from the baseline of 2012. A second concept that is important to understand is that species, tree size, and form have a direct impact on, on value of a stand and also its, its growth. And uh, what we have uh, noticed, and which has been uh, uh, corroborated from other jurisdictions as well and, and well validated, is that saw log production uh, on a particular tree uh, hits a maximum at a certain diameter breast height. And usually for sugar maple and yellow birch, it is around 45 centimeters. Uh, beyond that point, uh, discoloration and rot uh, start to set in and we're gradually losing uh, the potential for saw log material. So the second concept we, uh, we recommend to harvest trees that have hit that, uh, that economic or financial maturity before they deteriorate further and start losing saw logs and then dramatically uh, reduce in, in, in value. Unfortunately, this is counterintuitive for um, harvester operators. Uh, where we, uh, uh, human nature will, uh, will, will, will make them uh, harvest a smaller tree that is easier to process rather than go after uh, a big, uh, big wolf tree that is uh, difficult to, to, to process. Our third concept is that competition greatly impacts stand and tree growth. Uh, this again has been demonstrated by uh, Northern Hardwoods Research Institute, but it's very common uh, in the range of tall and hardwoods in, in, in North America. So in essence, um, a single tree growth is, is largely dependent on its diameter uh, and it is moderated by the growing space uh, around it. Uh, in, in partial harvest, uh, release is more effective on small, medium-sized trees than it is on, on larger trees, which, uh, which uh, reduce uh, growth. So the recommendation is to maintain an ideal diameter distribution throughout uh, the stand by doing multiple entries uh, where we will practice moderate to, to high removals. Uh, so this will encourage uh, growth, uh, more growth on trees that have the highest potential. Another concept is that interactions between species, tree size, and growing space impact individual tree growth rate. In this example here, we have a pattern of uh, individual tree growth rate impacted by the trees DBH. As mentioned before, as a tree gets past a certain size, its growth rate will diminish. So this is the pattern for a tree uh, within a very tight environment of 30 square meters per hectare. This pattern is for a tree uh, of different diameters under uh, an environment that is not so crowded, so 15 square meters per hectare. And finally, this is a pattern for sugar maple uh, growth rate by diameter uh, when they are open, open growth. The same patterns exist in the same uh, ranking for yellow birch, but yellow birch always has higher growth rate than uh, sugar maple. So the take home message here is that uh, single tree growth is dependent on DBH and species. Uh, growing space moderates growth further. Uh, release of a tree uh, will give better results, better growth rates on small and medium sized trees. And the target is to maintain an ideal diameter distribution uh, for the stand through multiple entries. Again, trying to um, harvest trees of larger size, which don't have the same growth rate. Also, growth rate is impacted by a tree's vigor. Uh, this example, again, sugar maple of good health, uh, pattern across different diameters, 
when health is just average, the growth rates across all diameter ranges are less. And finally, uh, sugar maple of low growth rate will grow a lot less than uh, any other situation. Uh, for for uh, yellow birch, the patterns are exactly the same. Again, yellow birch has a higher growth rate than uh, sugar maple. So with this concept, uh, it is uh, recommended that we maintain an ideal diameter distribution through multiple entries and to always harvest trees with less vigor uh, that are more at risk uh, because they don't have quite, uh, quite a high growth rate as trees that are vigorous. So far, we've seen that growth rate is impacted by species. It is impacted by uh, diameter of the tree. Also, its uh, health status, its vigor, uh, and uh, competition around that tree. So a silviculturist can manipulate those parameters and make sure uh, stands are, um, are obtaining uh, ideal growth rate uh, throughout their life cycle. Now we're looking at um, recruiting regeneration. So for tolerant hardwood stands that do contain um, American beech, uh, we, see, we see a pattern uh, based on the intensity of the harvesting. Uh, beech uh, will regenerate well uh, at, low, uh, at low harvest intensities. If we open up, uh, beech regeneration will not do as well. Uh, sugar maple has uh, kind of a paraboloid uh, uh, response where at low removals, uh, sugar maple will not regenerate very well and, and generate um, saplings. Uh, but at medium, medium intensities, uh, sugar maple will actually regenerate uh, better than most other species. Yellow birch has a very specific pattern. If you want to recruit uh, yellow birch and obtain uh, saplings in your stand, you need to uh, you need to create a big openings, so high harvesting intensities. And uh, red maple does not seem to have a particular pattern. It does equally well uh, under different types of uh, harvesting intensity. So if we are practicing even age management. Uh, even age silviculture, where we do remove a very high uh, proportion of the of the stands, so very high harvest intensities. Uh, we will promote yellow birch. We'll do okay with sugar maple. Discourage uh, American beech and red maple is relatively not impacted. On the other end of the scale, <clears throat> if we practice uneven age silviculture, where we do uh, uh, have a smaller harvesting intensity, then we will uh, we will promote beech. Uh, it's going to be a little bit good for sugar maple, but even better for for beech and yellow birch. Of course, will not do well. But the interesting civil culture, which is fairly new in North America, if we practice uh, medium removal intensities, so between 40 and 80 percent removals, uh, it's considered to be uh, irregular, um, irregular civil culture, too age extensive, irregular shelter wood. Uh, in that window, uh, that's where we have the best opportunities to stimulate uh, sugar maple regeneration, still encourage yellow birch, but uh, discourage uh, regeneration of, uh, of uh, American beech. So if we are interested at minimizing beech, <clears throat> we have to uh, practice uh, civil culture that uh, creates enough openings to encourage sugar maple and yellow birch and discourage uh, beech. The last concept is with regards to um, how even uh, is the uh, distribution of trees after after treatment. And, and what we know is that at some point, if um, if the crop trees that are left are uh, too much in, in, in clumps and uh, their crowns are not evenly released, uh, the impact of the treatment is kind of canceled. And at some point, if we have a very, very patchy treatment, uh, the effect is negligible and not better than, than doing nothing. Uh, 
Um, so uh, it is highly recommended that when we uh, when we practice uh, partial harvesting as part of a um, part of a silviculture regime, that we uh, we try to release trees evenly and avoid uh, patchiness and leaving clumps of, of trees. So this concludes the second part of this uh, three-part video series. Uh, in, this, uh, in this portion, we introduced uh, concepts that we can use to change the way uh, we're managing hardwoods to, to, to help uh, uh, fill the gaps that we currently see uh, in, in New Brunswick and also in other jurisdictions. So we encourage you to uh, go to our website, www.hardwoodsnb.ca, and uh, check the section about the silviculture prescription system, where uh, you can go in more depth with some of those concepts.